Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over and going through my workout that I am gonna be doing now and for the foreseeable future. Um, for any of you that don't know, I do have the Easy Vest from Kenzu Fitness. So it's a new sort of style of weighted vest. I have done a review of it. I will leave a link to that down below. So I'm gonna be using that to do this sort of like weighted calisthenics workout that I'm gonna be doing today. And for any of you that didn't see the conversation that me and Matt had um, from Red Delta Project, the stream that we just uploaded, Loaded. In that we do talk a lot about weight calisthenics, some of the pros and some of the cons, and some of the, the two key principles that I brought up during that conversation about two different forms of progressive overload. Um, I kind of want to start moving more towards that sort of first sort of style of progressive overload that I'm going to be showing you guys today. So at the minute I'm in the conservatory, I'm going to be doing my workout, I'm going to be taking you along with it. So if you want to jump in and follow along, that's going to be great. Um, I'm going to show you sort of like how I warm up going through the exercise that I'm gonna be doing, um, the reps, the sets, and also the sort of the rest time, and also trying to explain to you guys why I'm resting a certain period of time, why I've picked these exercises, why the rep range, and why the weight specifically that I'm gonna be using, and going through that step-by-step step so you guys can take everything you can from this and apply it into your own training. So before we begin, if you're new here, my name is Lee, and this channel is dedicated to bodyweight training, calisthenics, weight calisthenics, anything involved within that niche. So if it interests you, make sure that you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you know when I upload. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and comment down below if there's any questions that you want answered. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. So I'm gonna be doing my warm up, and I do think it's extremely important to do your warming up and especially important, and I'm starting to realize this a little more now, as you get older, warming up becomes more and more important and you end up having to take more and more time. So even though I am just 30 now, compared to when I was in my early 20s, even before I was 25, I could pretty much jump into a workout, minimal warm up, and I could perform pretty well. Now it's taking longer and longer and sometimes it takes a little bit of a, a while longer for those muscles to sort of turn on. So it's very important, especially as you get older guys, to start taking a little bit more time to start warming up. I normally use resistance bands. I like them because you're able to sort of change the direction you want to sort of pull from. If you're using sort of weights or different things like that, it goes against gravity. So it's only gonna work in one direction where if you've got some resistance bands, you can attach it to either a pull-up bar or I've got one of those punch dummies that I put it to and you can work it from loads of different angles and start not only warming up the muscles, but start getting blood flow in them and in the connective tissue and actually starting to work on using the movement patterns that you're going to be using in that day. So I will be using the bands mainly to warm up my back and warm up my rotator cuffs, but mainly working in vertical pull, the, um, vert uh, horizontal pull and working those motions and then I'll end up doing maybe some push-ups and other things like that to warm up the front body. So today is mainly gonna be consisting of a sort of an upper body day. All of these are gonna be in weighted form and I'm gonna be using the Kenzu vest for doing that. And I have had some sort of custom weight plates finally arrive. It's taken me forever to get back into doing weighted calisthenics since the gym gyms have closed um, because people decided to buy up all of the weights and then sell them for double, triple, quadruple the price on eBay. So it's taken me a really, really long time to be able to get some. So now I've got some I can start implementing proper calisthenics, weighted calisthenics, especially using my vest to start doing that. So I'm gonna start showing you and going into my warm up now. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing around 12 reps for each exercise that I'm doing just to try and warm up those muscles and I'm trying to train those similar movement patterns that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna be doing sort of 12 reps using the band when doing that sort of like horizontal row position. And I'm really trying to focus on pulling, not just with my arms, but really focusing on pulling the shoulder blades back and really contracting the rhomboids of rear delts and getting those muscles fired and warmed up. I'm doing 12 reps just because I wanna get a little more blood flow in there make it light, make it easy, get my heart rate up a little bit, but I can really focus on trying to warm up, get that mind-body connection of placing tension in those muscles and warming that up. So I obviously will do both sides, then I'll do sort of like that, where I'm leaning over, I'm trying to replicate the pull-up position or as close as I can, especially with the room I've got and trying to fit it in the camera, but I'm just trying to focus on being able to recreate that horizontal pulling and really focus on pulling down and really trying to activate, especially like those lower traps 
um, and really trying to focus on pulling them down and contracting. And the same process with the horizontal row. Um, I'm trying to work, turn on those muscles, get blood flow in there and train that movement pattern. And then obviously for finishing, going over, I do a little bit of the same thing for the shoulders. Um, I do have a thicker band that I could do to make things a little bit more challenging, but I don't want to get myself not so much too fatigued or too much um, warmed up because it is in the conservatory and it's really, really hot in here. I'm doing my best not to try and sweat too much. So I don't actually need to warm up that much. So it's more to do with getting those movements primed and ready to go. So kind of a bit of done a bit of a warm because my first two exercises are gonna be uh, pull-ups and handstand push-ups. So my main priority is gonna be warming up those two muscles mainly focusing on them because by the time I then go on to my next lot of exercises, those first two would have warmed them up efficiently enough that I'm ready for the next two. So it's gonna be first focusing on the weighted pull up now. I'm gonna sort of like go into what I think the best way into building up to the reps when it comes into weighted calisthenics. I wouldn't bother attempting weighted calisthenics, especially for something like the pull up until you can at least do 10, 12, 15 pull ups with your body weight because you need to, once you are able to do that many reps, you've built a good level, a good foundation of strength, stability, muscular endurance and strength and also technique and form and that work built in to actually strengthen up your connective tissue as well because that takes longer to grow to become more efficient and to recover than your muscles do so i would sort of have that as a prerequisition to be able to start weighted pull-ups if you can do that then you're ready for this sort of step so what you want to be doing is finding having an idea of what you're going to be going for like a weight and then building up to that so you don't just want to jump in and say right i'm going to be doing 20 kilo weighted pull-ups as soon as you do sort of like a warm-up set with your pull-ups crack on 20 kilos straight away. If you do that, it is gonna feel really, really heavy and your form and your sets after that will suffer for it. So have an idea of what you fancy going for and build up to that set. You don't need to do a lot of reps, but it's more about saying right to your body, get used to having this much of an extra load on your body and then that will prepare it for it so you can actually make use of your actual work set being a proper good set, okay? So let's jump into that. Right, so now you are ready to do your pull-ups. I recommend doing a few warm-up sets. I'm not saying go to the point where you feel fatigued, but I would say maybe do a couple of short mini sets or maybe a couple, two or three reps just to get used to the movement, get used to the movement pattern you're gonna have to be doing and to try and reinforce good form from the get-go. So I like to jump up there, do a few couple slow controlled reps, really focusing on the squeezing, trying to place tension in the muscle. And then I'll do a few sort of maybe sets where I do a couple of explosive reps to prime my body, prime the fast twitch muscle fibers for what's gonna be coming, which is gonna be the weighted version, okay? So let's just show you how to do that. do a couple reps see how it feels you're not here to fatigue the muscle the warm-up isn't about fatiguing you it's not about oh god like I've got myself burnt out and I'm ready for my workout this is about priming to try and make yourself as efficient as a possible for performance wise because what we're trying to do we're trying to perform better we're trying to get stronger trying to build our muscles so we don't want to fatigue now the warm-up is not where the work is done Use this for a time to get your ready, get yourself ready for when the real work begins. So that was a couple of slow, controlled reps, getting used to the form. That'll be a couple of fast. So when you want to focus on trying to get bigger and stronger, you wanna be focusing on activating your fast twitch muscle fibers, your type two. Okay, these are the ones that are responsible for when you lift heavy. These are the ones that have most capacity for growth and strength gains. You don't just have to lift heavy to activate these. Just by doing something explosive turns on these muscle fibers, but you have less room for energy. Like your energy system for when you're doing heavy lifting, maybe you could say eight to 12, but mainly eight reps below, five reps below, you're gonna be focusing on using your ATP, CP energy system, your creatine phosphate system. This is why when people take creatine supplements, it 
can help with explosive power and strength. So that's because that's the energy source you are using for that. So that's why sometimes it takes long to recover and that's why your rest periods will be longer. So I'm gonna get ready in to start the weighted calisthenics portion, so the weighted pull-ups. Um, but at the minute I'm using my easy vest from Kenzu Fitness. And for any of you that haven't seen this product before, it is sort of a brand new product. It looks like a sort of a, an army combat vest with a sleeve on the front. Um, some people have made jokes saying it just looks like you've got a couple of dildos on you because you get one on the back, so it goes there. This one then normally will go on the back and the weight plates actually uh, load straight onto there. So some people think it looks a bit silly, but I think it's a really, really practical thing. It's something that me and Matt from um, Red Delta Project have talked about that how when we both saw this, we knew this was gonna be a real game changer for the calisthenics movement, especially for weighted calisthenics because now you can load weighted plates onto the front and then now certain exercises, especially ones like push-ups, are now gonna be a lot more easier to make progress when it comes to strength sort of condition. So normally people can do 10, 20, 30 push-ups. Now you can start loading on weight and you can start making it where you're working maybe for sets of five or sets of eight, whatever you're going for in that strength sort of range. Um, so this vest now makes it possible. If you wanna know more info on it, I'll leave a little card up above, but ideally check it out after this video. I'll leave it in the video description so you can check out the review that I've gone on that so you can have a look at all the pros and cons with that product. Um, so. Basically, I've finally managed to get myself some plates, but these are sort of like the engineered, an engineering company, they're not proper like plates that you're gonna get from a normal weightlifting shop. But what I like about these is how thin they are. This adapter can hold, uh, it's got 80 um, mil or eight centimeters of loading space. So your typical weight plate that you'll have will be, uh, you'll probably fit maybe two plates, depending on the thickness and what the material is. And this vest can hold 100 kilos. But if you've only got two room for two plates on the front, two on the back, you're going to be playing around with 25 kg plates, um, which again, those sort of plates are going to be very, very big. They're going to have a very wide diameter, typically uh, 450 mil. So that could get in the way of arm movement in the front or in the back. Um, but ideally, you're going to be using that load for when you are doing um, your leg training, which I'll probably show you guys a weighted calisthenics sort of leg workout at some point. Um, and basically you could load on hundred kilos on this vest and you can start doing lunges, pistol squats, um, just normal squats. And it's gonna allow you to actually start effectively training your legs at home or while doing weighted calisthenics, as opposed to either a lighter vest or having to hold stuff like dumbbells or kettlebells in your hands. So you'll have your hands free, which is really, really important when it comes to balance. So this is why this vest definitely is gonna be a game changer for the weighted calisthenics movement. So literally all you need to do, you've got your plate, you've got a little sleeve, take this off and you slide this on. And because these plates are so thin, this is, around half the thickness of a typical plate, there's a little bit where this plate, will, this collar that come, comes in, will not tighten up enough um, because the plate is a little bit small. But once I start putting on more plates, that'll be a little bit thicker. Um, once I actually get into my work sets, I am planning on going heavier than five kg. But I wanna highlight to you that my goal today is to work around with 20 kgs. Um, I've been playing around with a kettlebell in a, in a backpack and it's awful and that was around 14 kilos So I'm gonna try 20 kg today and aim for about five reps So because I'm aiming for that I'm gonna do a warm-up set with 5 kg Then I'm gonna do a warm-up set with 10 kg then I'm gonna do a warm-up set with 15 kg and then I'm gonna do a warm-up set with the weight that I'm gonna be playing with But I'm only gonna do a single just to sort of tell the body get used to having 20 kilos on you to do this rep So I'm literally only gonna be doing two reps. This isn't about building muscle. This isn't about doing your workout. This is literally just to prep the body from your central nervous system to your muscles to your connective tissue to prime them for the workout that's to come. So I'll probably rest, because it's still quite light, maybe a couple minutes. Because like I said to you before, the energy system that we're gonna be using for doing our heavy loads, especially because I'm gonna be working around five reps a day, is our ATP-CP 
creatine phosphate energy system, okay? So this takes longer to recover. So if you wanna lift as heavy as you possibly can and perform, especially stuff like skill work, you need to have longer rest to allow your creatine phosphate energy system to recover. And there are little charts, if I can find one, I'll pop it in somewhere here that shows you the rate in which this thing's recovered on average per person, um, how much it, until it sort of fully recovers. It's normally around three minutes and you're around 95% plus. And obviously the longer your session in, the longer that will come down. But, and the more you train within that zone, the more efficient it'll become. So that was just my first warm up set with five kg. So we're gonna be moving on to a 10 kg set now. You can tell these are like proper industrial sort of like engineering plates. This is obviously a company that's just got a thing of metal. They've cut it and drilled a hole and it's very, very, like I've still got like the grease coming off it. This literally is just a typical plate that they've just drilled a two inch hole in and that's it. But I quite like it, it's quite rustic. They're my plates, they're not going anywhere else. I'll be staying in here. So it's quite a cool little feel, but this is the 10 kg one I've got here. Um, and the diameter of this one, I think was about 400 mil, I think, off the top of my head. So it's actually, it doesn't restrict my range of motion here. Let's tilt it down a little bit. So some of you are worried about how far you can come in. This seems to be the perfect size. So I, I think between a 10 and a 15 kilo plate, if you're using this vest in the gym, it's probably a good thing. Once you start going into 20, I do feel sometimes it might get in the way of what you're trying to do. But don't forget, you can always load up the back plate. I've taken mine out because I'm not using it. Um, and obviously if you can do it yourself, load on, put it over your head. Or if you're training in the gym, you can get someone to do it for you. So that is another thing that you can do, load it on the back, especially if you're doing stuff like push-ups, you might find it more comfortable to have the weight on the back than on your front. So this is gonna be my second warm-up set. I've got 10 kg on. I'm just gonna do a couple of reps and then again, I'll do another two minute rest. So again, that actual jump, it's five kg, depending on how strong you are, might be a big jump for you, it might not. That feels comfortable, um, feels nice. Um, again, I'm not about fatiguing, this isn't a workout, this is just a prep phase. So the next set will be, after a two minute rest, will be uh, 15 kg. So this isn't the best approach if you're someone who is always strict on time, but if you wanna get stronger and you really wanna dedicate getting strong, you wanna start dedicating more time to your training. Um, if you're someone that works out at home and you've got more free time, it's a lot of, a lot easier to do. You can space out your workouts a lot more, um, especially if any of you have heard of the, the theory of greasing the groove. That one, um, you would rest a lot longer and the strength that you gain from that is, is phenomenal. It's gonna be better than a typical bodybuilding sort of style where you're resting 60 seconds, 90 seconds, and it's just about keep, keeping the burn alive. But if you're doing five by five and resting 60 seconds, 90 seconds, sometimes even two minutes, you'll find that getting those five reps every single time gets harder and harder. So you've got to pay attention when you're doing your strength training, focus on your rest. Time it if you have to, so you know that you're getting a minimum of whether it's three minutes or whatever you're going for for that session. So just be aware that is the reason why you have longer rest periods when doing your strength training. So I'm gonna be going on to my next warm up set and it's gonna be 15 kilos. Um, for any of you who aren't aware, like this, the reason why this vest is so good as well is because like I said, it hardly takes up any room. It's not getting in the way on that. And this weight is very, very centralized. So it's not like it's hanging from a dip belt, which is gonna be down between my legs, which is gonna affect what you're doing with your legs. And it swings and it's not in a backpack where as soon as you go up on a thing, it sort of tilts away. It's balanced very, very close to your center of mass. And obviously if I had someone here with me, I would say let's evenly put the weight on the front and the back to make it even more uh, balanced. But the great thing about it is you load it as you go, leave the vest on, add it on, and then you're good to go. So next set, it's gonna be um, probably a double again, again, priming the body. It's an extra five kilo, so how much of a percentage that is of my body weight? It's a lot to be adding on, so I'm not here to fatigue. It's a warm up set. Also as well, try and be athletic with this. Like think, try and pull, with as much power and to be athletic as possible. You don't have to, to get bigger and stronger. You don't have to think, right, I have to slow this down to increase the time and attention. That is a useful principle that you can use. 
to stimulate hypertrophy, but it's not the only way. Being explosive and having that sort of external load on you, which is gonna be a high intensity, is enough to get you bigger. You don't even have to slow down the eccentric phase. If anything, that's gonna use up more energy, which you wanna use when it comes to lifting heavier. So power up, be explosive, come down. You don't have to be slow, but keep it under control so you don't put stress in your joints. Power up, try and be explosive and powerful. So I'm at the weight that I'm gonna be doing my weighted calisthenic pull-ups with. So we've got 20 kilos on the easy vest now. So this is where I'm gonna be doing my sets and starting them from. So I just wanna do a primer last warm-up set where I'm just gonna do a single with this weight just to prepare my body for this set. So that felt pretty good. So I'm gonna be going for sets of five today. So I'm gonna be keeping at three sets for each exercise. So it's gonna be five sets, um, or sorry, three sets, and it's gonna be three sets of five. So ideally, especially when you're doing strength training, the last thing you want is to be going to fatigue every single set. If you're someone that has to do that, and that's your only way of identifying whether you've had a good workout or not, if you have to and you must, do it on your very, very last set. But ideally, if you're going for a certain rep count, you wanna be using that to identify whether you've got stronger or not. So for me, I'm gonna be going through that principle that I talked about with Matt, which is I'm gonna find a weight, stay, or we'll find a weight that I can do five reps with. And I'm gonna stick at that weight basically until it gets easy. So maybe until I can do 10 reps, maybe 12, maybe even 15 reps. I'm gonna stay at this weight until this weight in a way becomes a part of me because if I can get good at doing 10, 15 reps with 20 kg, that is a huge jump in strength from just doing five and I'm gonna be getting more efficient with that weight. So the sets will stay the same and as I get stronger and the intensity starts coming down because I'm able to do more reps, the volume ends up going up accordingly. So there's that nice balance between strength and volume and intensity. So the other thing that I wanna say is do not go to fatigue every single set. You will burn out and your fatigue will catch you a lot faster. So you don't need to do that. It feels weird to do it, but when you do your set, get to a point where you feel like you have one, maybe even two left in the tank. So you come off that bar thinking, oh, I definitely have one more in me easily, maybe even two. That is the right reps, that's the right set. But make sure that when you're doing your weighted color sets, regardless of what weight you're doing, whether it's your warm up or your work sets, form stays 100% perfect, your range of motion stays the same. Do not cheat the form. When you're pulling up, just trying to get your chin over the bar. Don't cheat it, don't come down halfway just to reach a certain number. You're only gonna be cheating yourself and actually slowing down your process. Find a way, and again, me and Matt brought this up, find a way to make this harder for yourself. Squeeze out as much progress you can get out of this progression until you move on, okay guys? So I'm gonna get into my work sets and now I'm gonna rest for at least three minutes till my ATPCP energy system has fully recovered and I can really go hard with this set. So I'll see you then. Right, so I'm gonna be starting my proper full set. So I've got 20 kilos on the weighted vest. I've done a warm up set, did a little primer to sort of get my body prepared for how heavy this is gonna be. The first rep felt pretty good, so that's okay. So we're gonna be going in, I'm gonna be aiming for a set of five, but I want the idea of leaving one, maybe one, two reps left in the tank, I do not wanna be going to fatigue. I've still got two more sets to go through. Um, so I wanna make sure that I'm not burnt out because I've still got other exercises to come. But this isn't about burning yourself out. I know some people struggle with the longer rest periods and not feeling like they've burnt themselves out, brought themselves to fatigue all the time, might not feel like you've done a proper workout, but it's not about frying your central nervous system, it's about making it more efficient and same with your muscles. So that's one thing you might need to sort of adapt your way of thinking when it comes to this. So I'm gonna do my set five now. Yeah, I felt like I got maybe one, possibly a second one in there. It's a bit difficult on this bar because I ideally want to have my legs straight and you can get that tension throughout your whole body. Because I'm not too tall for it in a way, I kind of feel like I have to have my legs in behind me, so I'm not a fan of that, but felt like a good set. 
I'm gonna rest three minutes at least. Sometimes the old school saying was, go when you're ready. Um, but minimum of three minutes, put your timer on, um, and definitely you'll feel the difference by having a little bit of a longer rest you definitely will perform better. This isn't about getting the burn. Like when you do this, the feeling you get is different than when you start doing maybe eight reps plus. Like you can start feeling the lactic acid build up when you're doing that other stuff. And you finish, drop it. You can literally rest five, 10 seconds and you can usually bang out of a couple reps. With this, once you hit that, close to that fatigue, like it's a different feeling. And you wouldn't be able to just go, right, rest 10 seconds, jump up again especially if you hadn't left one rep in the tank, like you're gone, like the strength is gone and that is a, a nice feeling sometimes. So I've w rested, a, it was just over three minutes. So I'm gonna be going into my second set now. Um, just another little tip, if you don't have this vest, you can just use a typical rucksack, a, a, ideally maybe like a hiking bag because it's got a bit more padding on the shoulders and on the lower back. Even if you can load up some rocks, if you don't have weights, find a way to basically add that resistance and if you can find a way of making it progressive um, so you know how much extra you're lifting so at least that way you can it's measurable do whatever you can with whatever you've got you don't have to have this vest or weight plates to be able to utilize weighted calisthenics okay rocks books whatever you can cram into a rucksack it doesn't matter try and be creative and that is a great thing about calisthenics is you know, there's different ways in which you can work around distance, it's different situations and utilize equipment in different ways. Okay guys, so second set now. So yeah, so I reckon I had another rep rep and a half kind of in me. Um, you can definitely feel the difference as it starts to fatigue in you. And again, one of those ones where sometimes you can take an extra, oh, take a little bit of longer rest if you're starting to feel like the weight is getting a bit too heavy that you feel like you're struggling with the rep count. Because we all get days where sometimes it just feels heavier whether you're just feeling more fatigued, you're feeling tired, lethargic, you've got stress. There's different ways in which sometimes the same way can feel difficult. It's not always that you are weaker or your program isn't working. It can be something as simple as your recovery of your eating that day or day before hasn't been enough. So another thing that you can use to sort of help with your programming is the RPE scale, okay? This is something I learned when I did my PT course. It's sort of that idea where if you're working with someone, they can always say, oh yeah, 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 I feel okay. It's different cues that you can look at if you're training someone. So if you're on a treadmill, it's judging their breathing, are they able to hold a conversation, things like that. Another thing is you would hold up a scale and you would say to them, how hard are you working? You know, I think it was the Borg scale, it was between, it was zero and 20 and there's another one and so forth years ago now. But it's that idea where someone would scale how hard they're working, an RPE scale. So if you might be between one and 10, 10 is literally like all out max, I've got nothing more in me. And that's like, you'll be your one rep max sort of thing. And down near the bottom is gonna be like, oh, yeah, this is pretty easy. So that could be like your 15 rep count. Put an RPE scale in your set, every single set, every single workout. How did that set feel? Did it feel good? Did it feel easy? Because sometimes you might be able to look at that and think, okay, the last couple of sessions I've been having, my RPE when using 20 kilos, it's been around six or seven. Maybe it is a little bit lighter than I should be going for. Maybe if I add another 2.5 kg plate or something like that, get my scale where I want it because that is another way of identifying your intensity. A percentage of your one rep max, you could say. It should sort of go in unison with your, you could make it so it's one to 10 would be, you know, zero to a hundred percent. You wanna be when you're doing sort of say five reps, around 80% of your one rep max. So your RPE should be around maybe eight and see how it feels if you're like, bang this out, this is too easy, adjust accordingly. And sometimes you'll have days where you just feel tired and fatigued, adjust it accordingly. It feels a bit hard, I'll adjust it, I'll either lower the volume or lower the weight, lower the reps, whatever it is, 
practice, you're still making progress, you're still doing something which is better than nothing, but you're trying to find different ways in which you can see whether your program is working and adjust on how you're feeling so you can keep making progress. So that's one thing I definitely recommend guys doing is using the RPE scale when it comes to your programming and each workout. So rested another three minutes, so I'm gonna be doing my final set. One thing I do wanna say before I finish this set, and this is something that you can add into your program. If you're someone that goes, I cannot wait three or four minutes between each set and do that over three sets, like, I just don't have the time. Um, I don't like waiting around that long. One thing you could do is possibly drop it down to two sets, but each set is a super set where you'll do a weighted version for your rep count, and then strip the weight off, jump up there and do an unweighted version. And again, don't go to burnout, like go to the point where you've got one or so left in the tank, but that'll be a way of making up for the fact that you're doing one less set um, of the overall sort of strength side, but you're still, you've still got enough volume to make up for that lost set, if you know what I mean. Plus it makes it a little bit more fast paced for you. Some of you that like a bit more of a fast pace, more of a sort of, I guess, a, a kind of fatiguing feeling on there. So if you don't want to try that, try, do a weighted version, drop it, then do a normal version. This doesn't just apply to pull-ups, it can be any of the exercises that you choose. So I'm going to try that now just to see what it feels like. I guess one way in which you can actually have a little bit of structure there is, and as you get stronger, do your weighted version. Then when you do your unweighted version, do the same reps. I felt like I naturally burnt out. I probably have one more in me there from what I did with the weighted version. Plus it's quite nice, you feel a bit out of breath. And your working muscles as you progressively start to fatigue, you keep the work going a little bit more. So give that a go, hey, that's another approach. Weighted, superset, unweighted. Sounds good. Right, so finished with the pull-ups now. So now I'm gonna be moving on to handstand push-ups. So the similar principle to the pull-ups, exactly the same is, I'm gonna do a couple sets, um, just normal body weight, whether I just pop up, hold it, try and think about that stability that I want with my arms, sort of straight arm strength and sort of scapular strength and just get stable in that position. Because again, we're not in it very often during the day. So maybe a, a thing where I just hold it, create that stability. Then I might do a couple of sets where I play around with the reps, play around with also the depth as well, because again, you can make an exercise harder or easier by what you do with the range of motion, whether you short or increase it. And on handstand pushups, you can increase it by either going on, say, parallettes or push-up stands, or you can actually bring your hands closer together, in essence, making your arms longer. So that will actually increase the range of motion. If you go wider, similar with a pull-up, you're shortening the range of motion. So that's one way in which you can do it. I'm gonna be doing Probably the handstand push-ups, so I'll probably just try the 5kg today. It's been a long time since I've done weighted um, handstand push-ups because before I got this vest, it's very, very difficult to do weighted hands, um, handstand push-ups because you try putting a rucksack on your back, it just slides down your back, like it just doesn't work. So this vest makes it possible. So it's another reason why you want, you should check it out. Um, so I'm gonna do that today. And again, before we get into it, I've had people say to me, the way I do my handstand push-ups because I face the wall and then pop up, it's not a proper handstand push-up. Well, in my opinion, it is still a handstand push-up. It's just different to other people. And I can understand if you walk your feet up the wall and then your face is facing the wall, it's probably better for learning how to do the balance because it's a lot easier to stack your body so you learn how to basically stay straight if you're learning to do a freestanding handstand push-up. Fair enough. 
I'm not gonna argue there. But in this position, with the space that I've got, with the different equipment, I've got quite a lot of equipment in here, trying to get out of that position, if something goes wrong and I flip it that way, I'm more likely to hurt myself. And secondly, when I'm in that position, I find, especially if I'm wearing socks or even barefoot against this wall, every time I'm doing a push-up, I feel like I have to walk my feet up the wall. And even if I sort of straighten my toes and slide up, I find it has a lot more resistance to doing the handstand push-up than if I pop up the other way. Um, and I don't mean I'm trying to make the exercise easier, but it's actually just making my form worse by doing it that way. So that is why I'm gonna be doing my pull-up, my handstand push-ups in that direction, just to clear that up for anyone that thinks, okay, why is he doing it that way? It's not a problem handstand push-up, there is a reasoning behind that. So I'm gonna pop up and do a sort of warm-up set now. Whether you're able to see it or not, the camera. Sometimes it's nice just to do a few reps, hold, try and play around with, because that's what keeps you balanced. It's that constant pushing your fingers into the ground to try and keep, as you start to come down, push your legs back up. Something I've got to work on, but I'd rather use the handstand push-ups to get stronger than work on the skill side at the minute. Once I get up to a level of strength that I'm happy with, I may then reduce the work, find that way in which I can just maintain strength then focus more on the actual balance and then work towards maybe a, a freestanding handstand push up. But that's basically it. So I'll probably have that as my warm up. That felt pretty good. And then I'm going to move straight into my weighted version. So I just realized that you could basically only see my legs when doing those forms. So I've managed to adjust the camera so you can actually see it. And now you're not just spending, say, 30 seconds looking at my weird socks. So now I'm going to get into my work sets. Um, I'm going to try 5kg. Never know, I may be wrong. I might put 5kg on and it's easy. Um, and I can do more than five reps with a couple left in the tank. Um, sometimes if it's that you haven't done it for a while or it's fairly new, um, a bit of trial and error. Like you, you can't go wrong. At the end of the day, like me doing a set and then thinking, okay, that was a bit too easy. I'll just do another set. It's not a bad thing, it's, it's extra work. Um, volume is a big driver for, for muscle growth, so the extra set isn't gonna do me any harm. It's more training the central nervous system, so it's not a bad thing. So write it down in, in your little log, like five kg felt too easy, so forth. My only issue is with the plates that I've got, I can either go five kg or 10 kg. Like I don't have any middle ground, so we'll have to see how it goes. I might risk going for 10 kg and see how it goes. Um, but let's pop up now. <sighs> stay there maybe I had a couple more but I don't think I had enough in me to be able to get out a good set of five with the 10 kg so that's fine once I get to a good level of reps with this um, the next jump up will be okay again what I love about this vest it literally as soon as I popped up there was no movement in it um, you don't normally get that so I love doing handstand push-ups. I think it's one of the best things you can do for your shoulders. Um, the fact that I can now make this more progressive is fantastic. I tried focusing more on trying to keep my elbows in a bit more. Whether it looked like that, I don't know. But sometimes it's very, very easy with a handstand push-up to let your elbows flare out because it feels a bit easier. You're shortening the range of motion. So again, those are little things that you can play with during your set. You focus more on bringing those elbows in it's gonna tax the triceps a lot more as well. It's gonna tax the shoulders a lot more. The range of motion is a little bit longer because your arm has a longer distance to travel. If it's out here, 
locking out isn't as long. If you bring it in, it's got a lot longer to lock out, especially if you're going from, you know, whether it's the top of your head or top of the peak, it's gonna change. So there's a little things you wanna pay attention to when you're doing your handstand push-up. So set to rest is about three minutes. Um, in the meantime, again, you can try and meet yourself. If you find like it's hard to rest that long, just try and preoccupy yourself, don't just sit on the phone. Like I've set up the, the rings for my next workout, or the next exercise, sorry. So um, this is ready, we'll see how this feels. Normally you find as well, like your second set ends up being your best set. Your first set was sort of a prepare your body and you do it and you think, ah, oh, that feels pretty good. That was either quite hard or a bit too easy. And your second set just seems to just feel, I think, your best set. Your last set, maybe that's when the fatigue kits in, I don't know, but second set is normally your best set. I don't know. Maybe come in a little bit more narrower than last time makes it more challenging. Either way, maybe one more in me. So I'm happy with that. The other thing as well, sometimes you've got to get your body angle just right because sometimes when you come too close to the wall, when you push yourself up, sometimes your feet touch the wall and actually that pushes you away from it. There's nothing worse when you're near the end of your set. You push away from the wall, you then got to kick back up but all your strength's gone. So, nearly happened there, but luckily it didn't. So, maybe three minutes, maybe three and a half, and we'll do it again. So, this is last set, best set. Um, and again, if this looks familiar in another video, in between rest periods, I am trying to make other videos so I can help you guys with a little bit more information when it comes to your weighted calisthenics. This is gonna be the one that I actually talked about rest time, so. In case it looks familiar, I do change my clothes and I do do different workouts during the day, so. Last set, best set. I think I lost count and did six then. Never mind, extra red. So third exercise I'm gonna be doing is the inverted row. In my opinion, it is better to do this on rings, suspension training, whatever you're using and on a fixed bar. It feels more comfortable, you've got a bit more movement in there and you can actually increase the range of motion so you can get a better contraction in your mid back. To me, if I had to put down one of the most underrated exercise to do, it would be the inverted row. Like this is an incredible exercise and um, People who do do it, a lot of the time when they do it, it's mainly of a way of helping them progress to the pull-up, and that's a great way of use, utilizing it. Um, but other than that, this is a fantastic exercise, and for how people live now and posture, and a lot of people neglecting back training in general, but especially the horizontal pulling, like pull-ups um, pull take over when it comes to back training. But this is such a great exercise for strengthening your mid-back and actually balancing a lot of, say, your shoulder health fantastic exercise and you can progress it even without weights by making it harder by what you do with your legs whether you have them straight whether you have them bent how far they are away you can adapt the height you can change the angle um, so many different variations of this exercise and i do think it is a great thing and something i reckon a lot of you should if you're not doing it at least give it a go and see how it implements into your training you'll definitely feel better the contraction especially in your mid back feels a lot better than I find in, with a lot of other exercises. So the great thing about adding this in now is I've already got a bit of fatigue. Because obviously, especially that strength side, it's not like if you're doing sort of higher reps where you get that burn, you leave it enough time, the burn goes and you can keep going. Um, this, I can feel the fatigue is already in my back. Um, so this is a progression down, so to speak, from the pull-up. So, because I'm naturally getting weak, weaker, 
you know, accumulative fatigue. I'm now doing a progression that's down that should match with my level of fatigue that I've got now. So I'm not gonna be like, right, this is a really easy exercise compared to the pull-up. I was doing 20 kg pull-up, so I should be going up to say 20, 30, 40 kilo inverted rows. Like, unfortunately, it's not like, like that. Um, I'm gonna do a warm-up set now, same as I do with any other sets. Focus on that form, focus on putting tension in the right muscles at the right time, and really focusing on squeezing my mid-back. Um, and then I'm gonna see how that feels, but I reckon I'm probably gonna be playing around with around maybe 10 kg today to see how it feels. I don't normally do these weighted. Again, without the vest, I've only just got the weights. It's gonna be sort of a trial now to see how this feels. Um, but we'll, take, we'll go from there. Yeah, it feels quite hard in my mid-back. My mid-back, I can definitely feel the fatigue now from the pull-ups. Um, I think also when you're doing your handstand push-ups, there's a lot of stability that is going on in your traps and in your mid-back to stabilize yourself when you do your handstand push-ups. So it all accumulates and it builds up together. We also got to remem remember as well that in a lot of your pulling exercises, the long head of your tricep does contribute. Um, it actually attaches up there in the scapula. So you will actually, especially in the pull-up, you will find that you do get a lot of activation and the long head of the tricep is actually you. So maybe there's that fatigue from that as well, especially from hands and push-ups. I'm not too sure, um, but I reckon 10 kg will probably be a good weight to go with today. And then if I'm wrong, I can adjust. If it's too high, too heavy, too light, we'll go from there and uh, sort of apply that. But the great thing about these is you've got that rotation and that's what you don't get with the bar. You're very, very fixed, and I find it's nice just to get that rotation and then bring it in and squeeze it and hold it. Really, really good exercise. If you're not doing it, give inverted rows or Australian push-ups a go. So I'm gonna go into and actually, what I didn't say I was gonna do, which I've done before, and what I said I would do before is, if I have an idea that I'm gonna go for 10 kg inverted rows, I need to do a middle ground and test it. So I'm gonna do a set, couple reps with a five kg plate. So that definitely felt better than the first set, actually. Um, even though I've got weight on me, that felt better. Um, and definitely taking out the back adapter when doing that definitely makes it more possible. Range of motion isn't restricted there. So my next set is gonna be testing, doing a warm up set with 10 kg, and then I'm gonna have a rest and then do my set with 10 kg. So I'm at my weight that I'm gonna be doing my sets with. So I'm just gonna do a quick feeler, um, see how the weight feels, see if, the other good thing about doing this sort of approach is you can find out whether you're gonna be at the right weight or not. If you bang on that weight and it feels way too heavy, probably a good chance you might not be able to do five and leave some in the tank. So this sometimes can be quite good, not only to prime your central nervous system and your body for the weight and what's about to come, but also give you a quick indicator on whether the RPE is going to be a bit too high, the weight's too high, the intensity's too hard, and you can adjust accordingly. So I'm probably just going to do a single, maybe a double of this, and that's it. Yeah, I reckon that weight will be all right. So just like the other ones, I reckon I might go for 20 kg on the push-ups. 
see how it goes. I'm gonna do a warm up set just to five, see how it feels, and go from there. I did do the push ups on the nano bars before, um, but I kind of felt like the adapter kept getting in the way. Um, that's obviously the one issue with the Kenzu. Again, take off this, put the back one on, start loading the weight there, but that means I have to take the vest off to put the weights on, um, which I want to make it a bit faster as possible. So now if I do them on the pull-up mount, it's got a slightly bigger thing, but you could use parallettes that are a little bit of a higher depth, um, and I'm going to try that now. Yeah, that didn't feel too bad. Um, definitely higher, it's a good height. I'd like to get a bit more range of motion, ideally. Um, but once I start loading on the weight, it will still be hard, so yeah. Yeah, that felt good. It's nice doing push-ups now and actually starting to feel like you can't just bang them out all day. I know you can do other variations where you do close grip, where you're working towards more archer push-ups, but it feels nice to be able to do it this way. So I decided to adjust the push-ups. Um, I didn't want the fact of reducing range of motion just because it's more convenient than loading um, it on the back instead of the front, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do them on the rings instead. Um, because of the stability, the fact that you've taken where you're doing them on the rings, you need more strength to be able to do that. So even though I'm at a slight incline now, which would technically make the exercise easier, because I'm doing them on the rings, I think it sort of evens that balance out. But if it allows me to do a longer range of motion, on the push-up then I think that's going to be better than just having a slight angle and I enjoy doing rings it's been a while since I've done them so I might not have to go as heavy on them because of that so I'm thinking 15 20 set five I reckon I'm gonna go 20 screw it Ugh. The only issue on the pull-up mate is these bars slightly got in the way um, but not too bad, still able to I think get a good set done. Um, definitely better doing it that way. Range of motion felt a lot deeper. I had to really focus on stabilizing because I was using the rings. So overall a good set. I think 20 kilos isn't a bad thing. If I was on like a I know I had these rings around a tree or something um, where these bars went in the way. I think it'd be even better, but hey, it's better than it was before, so don't be afraid to adapt it.
So guys, that is basically going to be it for my overall workout now. I may jump up and do a little bit of extra pull-ups because I've got these rock rings to get a little bit of finger uh, grip work in there as well and do a few extra pull-ups, one of my favorite exercises. So, But this is like the base core of my exercise. You focus on these four, make them progressive when it comes to your strength training and I think you're gonna go a lot further because this is sort of more of a minimalist sort of style. I feel that you can apply more into these key exercises. So you've got a vertical pull, vertical push, you've got a horizontal pull and push. So you're pretty much hitting everything. If you wanted to add in a little bit of extra arm work, um, you can if you want. I mean, I don't have the biggest arms like that, but just from focusing on those two and making it progressive and focusing on getting stronger. And obviously if you're in a calorie surplus as well, you should see some progress in your, in your arms anyway. But if you want to add in a little bit of extra, Go ahead, I wouldn't do too many, a couple sets, um, and that'd be fine. If you were someone that, that was gonna be, instead of doing what I'm now, some finger grip pull-ups, you wanted to add in some chin-ups, which really hits a, uh, the biceps hard, add them in, but try a more minimalist, sort of less exercises, but you can go harder in those exercises. See how that approach works, because you can always add in the future, whether it's to get past the plateau, whatever it is, but it's harder to take it away, um, especially when you don't know what's working and what's not. But if you try this minimalist sort of style, you can again rinse out how much you can get with this, these bare bone exercises that seem to give you so much for your work. Um, I would normally sometimes do a little bit of core work, whether it's leg raises, but I find just for time, especially because I'm taking longer rest periods with this sort of style, um, it's easier to chuck it in with the legs. Um, but that's sort of basically, I wanted to give you guys an idea of what I'm gonna be going through now. This is sort of a program that I'm just starting. So some of these weights may not seem as high as they were, but I haven't been able to do any proper weighted calisthenics for a good three months, it's just a whole lockdown. So it's gonna be nice to sort of start here and build it back up. So my overall plan is to sort of try that Russian sort of style of progressive overload. So I've got these weights, I'm just gonna stick at them until I'm cracking out maybe sets of 10, maybe like that, that's an extra five reps to gain, it's not too much. Um, and it's not too much endurance work, but 10 reps with 20 kg for pull-ups is, is fairly impressive. And then once I hit 10 reps, maybe chuck on a gain. It works well with what plates I've got too, because I can't make smaller increments if I was, you know, each sort of session. So if I stay at this and get acclimatized from doing five to then 10 reps, that's a big strength increase. So. I could then probably jump up by a 5 kg or maybe even a 10 kg, shock the system to I'm only doing five reps again and rinse and repeat. So this is an idea, again, if you guys like this sort of style of video where you get to see what I'm doing more and maybe the videos are a little bit more longer but a little bit more in depth, then comment down below, I wanna know what sort of style you prefer or would you prefer a more condensed, shorter version showing you what I'm doing? But obviously this is gonna be the sort of style that I'm gonna be doing for a while. So those videos would technically just be the same but let me know what sort of content workout wise you guys wanna see and if you wanna see more tips or advice of what I'm doing, um, comment down below, let me know what you want and especially if I put up a community tab, sometimes I ask different things on there. Uh, get involved in there and let me know what is gonna be best for you. But that's it for today guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, consider subscribing. Don't forget to comment down below. If you thought this video might help someone, if you think it would, give it a share and I will see you in the next video.